this is now part five and the final message for this series on choices. Somebody say choices. We've been learning throughout this series uh, that we have to learn to admit to, own up to, and understand the consequences of our choices. We all know and we all know that some choices that we make are, are easy. And then there are some that are a lot more complicated, more difficult to make. Some choices affect you just for a day, but we all can attest that there are some choices that can follow you the entirety of your life. To choose, what is to choose? To choose is to select from a number of possibilities. When you choose, you pick by preference. To choose is to prefer or decide to do something. Uh, when you choose, you select freely and after consideration. In the course of a day, you make sometimes hundreds of choices. And it's those choices that uh, sometimes will determine what you wear. You make choices as to what you're going to eat and when you're going to eat make choices about the route that you're going to go to church or the route that you're going to go to work. You make choices every single day of your life. And we are constantly and have been constantly for the last month been reminded by God that God doesn't force you to do anything. But he wants you to choose to do what you do for him. He wants you to choose to love him. God doesn't want robotic love. He wants love by choice. God wants you to choose to serve him. God doesn't make anybody do anything in the way of serving him. What God does is God continues to bless you and give you opportunities to serve him. And by doing that, you do it because you choose to do it. God leaves it up to us, which is why it's called free will. He leaves it up to us to not only love him and serve him, but he leaves it up to us to believe in him. What kind of God would we serve if we were forced to believe something we didn't want to believe? So he leaves it up to us to make the choice in order to believe not only in him, but in his word. Because your choices say a lot about who you are. Listen to somebody long enough and you can determine what they believe because their choices have a way of signifying those beliefs. Uh, we also learned that uh, if you examine your life, you'll determine that your life has been comprised of nothing but choices. We got some advice from God that helped us, I believe. He said, he told us to never ever make a hasty choice that you should always carefully consider things before you choose them. You should never, ever make an emotional choice. The last thing you want to do is make a long-term decision based on a short-term emotion. You should never, ever make a decision or a choice based on somebody else's choice because just because they did it doesn't mean you ought to do it. And so we've been learning from God that uh, we also need to be careful about the choices that we make with our mouths. Death and life, the Bible says, are in the power of what? The tongue. You can make a lot of choices by your mouth. You choose sometimes where your financial condition is by what you say out of your mouth. The word of God says it's not what you put in the mouth that defiles a man. It's what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. And many of us have made some not so good choices with our mouths. And we also learned that Jesus wants us to pick a side. That he would rather you either be hot and on fire for him or cold and want nothing to do with him. God says, I can handle either one of those. It's the lukewarm people that God says I can't deal with. It's the lukewarm that Jesus says I will vomit you out of my mouth because it's the lukewarm that are wishy-washy. 
he wants you to make a choice. You're either with God or you're not with God. You're either going to run with God or you're not going to run with God. You either want to be with God or you don't want to be with God. But you can't have one foot in and one foot out on Sunday. And you can't have be with God on Sunday and want to praise and worship him, but he can't find you Monday through Saturday. you got at some point to pick a side. And then on last week, God blessed us with Jonah and his story, and we learned from Jonah that there are consequences to your choices. Uh, we learned through the prophet Jonah that if you choose to disobey God, then there are consequences that come with that. We learned that Jonah decided he made a choice to disobey God, and in making that choice, it led up to how he found himself in the belly of that great fish. It led up to how he found himself in the midst of a storm. Maybe, just maybe, the storm you're in is because you made a choice, and that choice was to disobey God. But at the end of the day, you have to own up to that choice. Amen? Amen. But today, today, we're going to close out this teaching today, and it's today's message that God says, I want you to teach my people so we're not going to preach unless God just takes us there, but we're going to teach today. And today the subject matter is going to be how to make good choices, how to make good choices. Who, who, who wouldn't mind learning how to make good choices? Uh, well, God is going to help us today in how to make good choices. And as we have stated previously, you make choices all the time. You make choices about your health. You make choices about how you spend your time. You make choices about how you dispense the money that God puts in your hands. You make decisions and choices that impact you personally, and you make choices that may impact you professionally. All throughout, you make choices. You even make some choices that can affect you and impact you spiritually. Because we all make choices. And so we're going to deal today with how to make good choices. And in all the cases that we just talked about, the right choice can be helpful to you. The wrong choice can be detrimental to you. If you live long enough, and many of us can attest to this, if you live long enough, you will make some bad choices. Am I the only one that's made some bad choices? All you got to do is live long enough, and at times you will make some choices that will have you scratching your head. You will make some choices that will have you asking yourself or thinking, what was I thinking? Or better yet, what was I drinking when I made that choice? You will, from time to time, make choices that just don't make any sense. But God is going to help us today because he's going to give us some ways to help us to make the right choices. And he's going to share with us some pertinent questions that we all can ask ourselves before we make a choice. And I believe those questions are going to help somebody today. Let's look at Proverbs 3, verse 5. Proverbs 3, verse 5 starts with, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The first way to making a good choice is this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Say that again, trust in the Lord with all your heart. A person that trusts God is a person that has already made a good choice. Say that again, a person that trusts God with all his heart is one that has already made a good choice. God told us in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, he said, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. What God is saying is, is when you choose me, you choose the right choice. When you choose God, what you say to God is, I trust you. And when a person trusts God, he surrenders to his direction. When a person trusts God, he trusts God with not just some of his heart, but with all his or her heart. And here's what God wants us to do. He wants us to trust him with all of our heart. That means every corner and every facet of your life, God wants access to. 
That means you just can't give God some of it and not all of it. Because when you trust God with all your heart, what you say to God is, I leave my entire life, my exact being, everything about me in your hands. And when you say that to God, then God knows he's Lord in your life. How many by a show of hands say that you, you put your trust in the Lord? All right, pretty, 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 pretty good. Pretty, okay. But how many of you trust God with your choices? Ah, there we go. There we go. See, see, you can say you trust God with your mouth, but do you trust God with your choices? It's one thing to say I trust him, but it's another thing to give God access to you before you make a decision. Look again at Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Here's a second way to making a good choice. And that's this, lean not on your own understanding. Especially as one of God's own, we have to be careful that we no longer trust what we know. I'll say that again. You can no longer trust what you know. Here's why. Because as we've all agreed, we've fallen victim to our own bad choices. And so if we've made some bad choices and we can attest to making those bad choices, we have to now understand that we are proof that we don't know what we're doing. We have to admit to ourselves that if I've made some bad decisions in my life, I have to own up to those decisions. But I also have to admit to God, God, I can't do this without you. I have to trust in God and not lean on my own understanding because in my own understanding, I made some decisions that I wish I had made. I can trust in God with all my heart and not lean on my own understanding because my track record proves God knows better than I do. I can trust in him and not in myself because I've proven to God and myself that when it's left up to me, there's trouble. But when it's left up to God, there's goodness waiting on me. Proverbs 21.2. Watch this. Proverbs 21.2. Look at what it says here. Proverbs 21.2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but God weighs the heart. As we see here, we can convince ourselves we're right, but then discover how wrong we are. Go back to Proverbs 3, verse 7. Watch this. Proverbs 3, verse 7. There's a running theme here. Proverbs 3, verse 7. Look at what it says here. Do not be wise in your own eye. How many have done this? How many have done this? You convinced yourself that you were right about a thing. You made the decision, convinced you were right, only to find out you were wrong. I, am I the only one? Or maybe I just preached to myself today because I've convinced myself I've been right about some stuff and I made the decision to do it only to find out one month later, five months later, a year later, I wish I hadn't made that decision. But at the time that I made it, I convinced myself I was right. That's why you cannot be wise in your own eyes. Look at what it says here. Fear the Lord. Trust the Lord. And depart from evil. Because you can mess yourself up thinking you know everything. And trust me, you don't know anything. We're all here just trying to trust God and let God run this thing the way it needs to be run. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Then, here's the third way that you can make a good choice. And it comes as a result of bad choices. The third way to making a good choice comes by way of making bad choices. It's going to make sense in a minute. Oprah Winfrey, she said this. She said, turn your wounds into wisdom. Turn your wounds into wisdom. Uh, this particular way will only work if you've learned the necessary lessons from the mistakes that you've made. God bless me on Friday. I was in preparation mode. I was studying and I was just hearing from God and uh, he said something to me and it blessed my life. Although when he said it, I said, wow, uh, this, this can be true only if you learn the lessons that come from it. He, hear what God said to me. He said, son, 
sometimes the road to making good choices is paved with the concrete of bad choices. Sometimes you learn how to make good choices after you've made a series of bad choices. Am I the only one? Am I the only one that can attest to that? Sometimes you can discover uh, what the right thing to do is after you've done plenty of the wrong things to do. Uh, let me come down the street of those that are dating. Sometimes you got to date a few knuckleheads before you find the right one for your life. So, so sometimes, sometimes you got to make some bad choices before you realize what a good choice is. Sometimes you got to stump your toe in the middle of the night enough, and then when you get tired of folks laughing at you because you've stumped your toe, then you'll realize, maybe I need to take a different route so that I don't keep making that same mistake again. Choices are that same way. When you get to a place where you get tired of running into the same brick wall, that wall is going to stay there. It's not going to move. When you get tired of making that same mistake, running into that same wall, then you might realize that maybe I need to do something just a little bit different. Somebody say choices. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Then in verse 6 it says, in all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Catch what this says here now. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. See that? With all, not with all your, not just some of your heart, with all your heart. Then it says, and lean not on your own understanding. Whose heart? Your heart. How much of your heart? All of it. And don't lean on what? Your own understanding. This is talking to us. Then look at verse 6. In all, not some of your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your what? Your paths. So now, now God's going to help us. Before you make some choices, God's going to help us. There's some pertinent question that God says that he wants you to ask yourself before you make those choices. Before you make those choices that will hurt you, God says, maybe run these questions by them before you make that decision, and then it might help you not make those bad choices. Y'all don't mind if I come down and engage you a little bit. Y'all okay with that? Y'all okay? Y'all okay? Because now we're about to get into some meat and potatoes. Right now. Now, now, now we're about to get serious. It's about to get real. So, so God said, I got to get a little close to y'all. Y'all okay? Here's the first question. First question God wants me to share with you that you got to ask yourself before now. Before you make a choice, ask yourself this question. Is this God's way or my way? Ooh. Is this choice I'm about to make God's way or my way? Am I about to make this choice at the direction of God? Am I about to make this choice because I just want it? Uh-oh. Am I about to buy this house and pursue this house, pursue this purchase of a car, pursue any purchase because I want it or because I feel the urging of God to pursue it? Is this God's way or is this my way? Am I going to this place because I just want to be there or is God leading me to go there? Is this God's way or is this my way? See, when you ask yourself that question before you make the choice, Maybe, just maybe, God says you may not make some of the poor choices you made in the past. Amen. Am I doing this because I want to do it? Or am I doing it because God is leading me to do it? Mm. That's okay. It's okay. Here's the next question. Second question. Ask yourself this before now. Before you make the, the choice, ask yourself what is motivating this choice? Is this choice being driven by God's plan for my life? What's driving me to make this decision? Or am I doing it because the folks around me are doing it? What's motivating this choice? A am I making this choice out of fear and frustration? Or am I making this choice because I know this is what God wants me to do? <laughs> Here's another question. Am I making this choice out of temptation? Uh -oh. <laughs> Am I making this choice because the enemy has presented me with an opportunity and I just can't pass it up? Here's what you got to know about the enemy and God. 
God will present you an opportunity, but you have to choose to take that opportunity. The enemy will present you with an opportunity, but you have to choose to take that opportunity. God doesn't always tell you what's on the other side of that choice. That's why it's called trust. The enemy doesn't always tell you what's on the other side of that choice. That's why it's called temptation. You're either going to trust God and trust that he's going to lead you the right way or fall victim to your own temptations. But the choice is yours. And you've got to ask yourself, am I motivating by this choice because of uh, temptation or because of God's direction. And, and here's how you know. You, you just kind of know as God because it just feels right. We're going to deal with that in a second. Here's the next question because it's going to help you deal with that. Here's, here's the third question you guys should say. What kind of impact will this choice have on my life? What kind of impact will this choice have on my life? Here's some follow-up questions. How will this choice impact my finances and my financial future? Some of us, we just go running out making financial decisions without considering the impact it's going to have on our life. How will this choice impact my family? It's going to help somebody. Because you got to understand the choices you make now aren't just affecting you. They're affecting your spouse. They're affecting your kids. They're affecting your future. So you just can't go running out there making choices without first considering how will it impact my family? How also will this choice impact my children's future? How will this choice impact my health? Uh oh. Some of us, we just run out there and eat what we want. I got to tell on me. I got to tell on me. I was going around saying, I need to do better about losing weight. I got to, thinking that's right. I, I, I got to get in shape. I got to do it. But I kept making the same choices as to what to eat, and it was affecting my health. Well, I had to make a decision. I had to make some different choices. And by making different choices, I'm now starting to see some of the results I've been wanting to see. But some of us, we make the same choices about our health and then expect to get things to get better with our health. And God says, no, you got to change your choices. So how will this choice impact my health? How will this in choice, choice impact my financial future, my family? How will it impact my spiritual well-being. Uh -oh. That's why you got to be careful who you're listening to. You got to be careful who you allow to deposit into you because the wrong person depositing into you can affect your spiritual well-being. Have you stopped coming to church because they said something you done heard on the radio? Got you missing out on what God wants to do in your life because you're listening to somebody that doesn't have your best interests at heart. And believe me, the stuff that you choose to watch and choose to listen to can affect you. And they're getting rich off you, and you've lost your way with God. All right, let's look at the next question. Look at the next question. Here's the fourth one. Am I at peace with this choice? Am I at peace with this choice? Why ask this question? Because. When you're about to make a choice being led by God, you tend to be at peace about it. But if you're still uneasy, you're still not sure, if you're still waffling back and forth as to whether you should do it, that's an indication that maybe you shouldn't make that choice right now. And God has blessed each and every one of us with a barometer to help us in the person of the Holy Spirit. It's that Holy Spirit that will let you know this is the right decision. It's the Holy Spirit that will let you know this is the way to go. It's also the Holy Spirit that will tell you, no, not right now. But the problem with some of us is we dampen down that no, not now. We don't want to listen to no, not now because we want what we want, and we make a choice that God says you're not ready for, and God says you need to make sure you're at peace with the decision you're about to make. And by doing that, God says when you do it, when you have peace, God says it always seems to work out. So ask yourself, am I at peace with this choice? Here's the next question, the fifth question. Is this choice that I'm about to make the right choice for me? Is this choice I'm about to make the right choice for me? Uh, no pun intended, but 
uh, the problem with some of us is, is we're so busy trying to keep up with the Joneses uh, that uh, we make choices that aren't right for us. Just because the Joneses got it don't mean you got to have it. Just because it works for the Joneses don't mean it's going to work for you. Just because it's the Joneses that's making them happy, that choice works for them, doesn't mean that that choice is going to make you happy. And God's trying to deliver some of us to stop comparing ourselves with others and just trust God that maybe he's taking you a different path for a reason. So make sure that you don't make choices, not because of somebody else's choices, but because you know God is leading you to make that choice for yourself. Is this choice right for me? Is this house right for me? Is this position, this job for me? Is this future husband right for me? Is this future wife right for me? You've got to ask yourself, is this right for me? And again, in the person of the Holy Spirit, God will let you know, yes or no. You know, you know we counsel a lot of couples prior to marrying them, and uh, we tell them throughout premarital that God has a way of showing you whether or not this is the decision you ought to make. But you have to decide whether or not you're going to listen to what God is saying. And not only what God is saying, but God, especially in those sessions, uh, God will have people saying things in those sessions. And what we try to tell those couples, those future couples, is hear what's being said. Because it's God's way of helping you to make the right choice. But the question is, are you asking yourself, is this choice right for me? Because God says you can steer yourself clear of a whole lot of trouble if you ask yourself these questions. Proverbs 3, 5. Let's go there again. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Got to ask the question, do you trust God enough to guide you with your choices? God, I trust you to provide for me. But God, I don't trust you to help me make the right choice. As long, God, as you give me what I want, I trust you. But God, do I trust you to make sure I don't make the same mistakes in life? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, not some of your ways, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. In every choice, let God in on the conference. In every choice, let God in before you make the decision. In every choice, God ought to have a voice. Ooh. In every choice, God ought to have a voice. God should get a vote. But here's what we do. We veto God. But then want God to rescue us once we realize we made a bad choice. But if you let God in in the front end, ask yourself those pertinent questions. Give God a voice before you make the choice. You'll find that you'll make better choices. I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't, I'm tired of making bad choices. I've learned too many hard lessons from my bad choices. I want to be at a place where I, if I got to wait before I make the choice to know that it's right, then I'll wait. It'll save you a whole lot of heartache and a whole lot of pain. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. That word direct, when you look it up, is translated as make smooth. Good God Almighty. When you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him, God says, I'll make smooth your path. I'll make smooth your choices. I'll make smooth the decision making, and I'll make smooth the road that I'm trying to get you to go down anyway. But you got to trust me. You got to believe that I've got your best interests at heart. You got to know that I won't lead you astray. 
you got to trust me that the way I'm taking you, although it may not be as easy all the time, it's the way that's best for you. So God wants to encourage you today to make better choices. And that starts by choosing God. That starts by trusting God. That starts by stop leaning on what you know and trusting what he knows. And when you do that, you will make better choices. Let's give God some praise.